when someone tries to touch my ketchup and mustard, I have like a total meltdown. It's like so hilarious. I don't know why they reach for it. Like it's all hands off my ketchup and mustard. What, what is the New York style? Spicy mustard, New York style onions and sauerkraut. That's New York style. All right, please be careful. That's very, very hot. And then would you like a regular hot dog or the jumbo? The best thing to get on a hot dog would be New York style. And what's the worst thing to get on? Ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ketchup. Is this okay? Yeah. My dad and I are both uh, Marine veterans, and we're both disabled veterans, and we have our hot dog stands in front of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I actually have a master's degree, and I'm a special education therapist. But when business is good, there's nothing like <laughs> hot dog business. <laughs> <laughs> it's much better. Okay, sweetheart, listen, the cheese is very, very hot. Uh, okay, please don't get burned. Working out here in the winter time is um, basically a hold on for dear life until spring. During the summer, there'd be a crowd. We get a good six months and we get a bad six months. And if you're not prepared for those bad six months, you're dead. I was the first veteran ever to vend on Park's property. I pretty much opened up the door to, for veterans to be here. And then when we fought to get my daughter a permit, it opened the door for every disabled veteran to get a permit. So we did a pretty good thing. Except the veterans went ahead and leased their permits to non-veterans. <laughs> instead <laughs> it, of going into the business for themselves. Instead of going into business, it's, it's created a little bit of a problem. HML-167, it's a helicopter, a gunship outfit in the Marines. We dedicated it to, to the men that I served with in Vietnam who got killed. If those names aren't up there, you'd never know. Really brave guys. That's why when we see these guys over here pretending to be veterans, it, 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 it gets you upset, you know, so. You can see how much they care about, about their operation. They just throw everything on the floor. And they scraped off their permit because they were abandoning it every night. Being, being your own boss in the hot dog industry stinks. <laughs> <laughs> you have a black market that's controlling the industry. There should only be, between here, 81st and 83rd Street, four push carts. That's how many are legally allowed to be here. But you got nine. And you told to the city, okay, now what are you going to do with these five carts? And they don't, they, they're telling you, well, we know they're illegal, but we don't know how to get rid of them. It's one company running all these carts. And all they're doing is leasing permits. The problem is that the black market pushes the, us out and they take over the location. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna go do with a baseball bat and fight these guys? You can't do that. No. But it's better, it's also that you're not working for someone else and I can rely, my father can rely on me, I can rely on him, we don't have to worry, family. And after seeing my parents lose everything, it, it's, I'd much rather be here working with my dad every day. In our end of it, for me to be here tomorrow, I have to sleep here tonight. This is what I've been doing, guys, for six years. And basically, I just bundle myself up in the sleeping bag, buy myself a nice cowboy movie. As soon as I feel myself nodding out, I just take the pillow, put it against the door, I fall asleep. <laughs> That's it. So if you think that's a good thing in vending, <laughs> that stinks. I mean, I'm doing this six years now. So we'll bring this cart, get it clean, come back tomorrow, but I'll be here all night holding these locations. When you're in combat, it's nothing. But when you have downtime, you start to remember all these, these things. and uh, It gets tough in the beginning. I gotta get this for Liz. Yeah, Liz. Yeah. Okay. All right, Liz. I've never had retirement in my future. I don't even take vacations. I don't do any of that. I just work. I joined the Corps, I didn't know much about it. To me, it was, they're gonna land on the beach, you know, that kind of thing, what you see in the movies. 
And then when I got into the gunship outfit, it was a whole, whole different thing. Now you became a cowboy. And you never, that, was, that was as close to being a cowboy as you could be. Hanging out that, of that helicopter and doing what you had to do. And it was something. It was something. And I told my grandchildren, no matter, I told my, my oldest grandson is 20 years old. And he was with me the other day and I says, you're getting to that point where something's going to come in your life where you're going to have to make a choice to do the right thing or the wrong thing. You're going to do the right thing, even if it means you lose your job, even if it means that you lose your house, you do the right thing. Because if you do the wrong thing, no one's going to have respect for you. I figure I got 20 more years, then I'm going to go and fulfill my dream. I'm going to Alaska and I'm going to pan for gold. As long as I get to do it.